I usually get the best applause before I preach. <laughs> Let me say as I'm getting things together somewhat here that uh, I brought a very special person with me. She's always with me, and uh, I want her to j at least stand and wave at you. Come June the 22nd of next year, she will have put up with me for 45 years, and that's my wife, Beth. <laughs> Beth, give them a... <laughs> oh, she is indeed special and uh, so good to be with you. We have been here any number of times throughout the years that uh, uh, Pastor Mark's been here, Chad and Christy and the family have been here, and so we've come to know some of you by name even, and uh, many of you others by face, and uh, thank you, Pastor Mark and Naomi. Wonderful folks, wonderful folks. I suppose I probably ought to, since I've got the mic now, should say something relative to, I think I'll pick on his golf. I can remember Dyersburg Municipal Golf Course, west, northwest Tennessee, and we would go out on Mondays to play. I don't know if it was to play golf or for the therapy that was involved, but we'd play golf, and then he'd cry on my shoulder, and I'd cry on his the next week. And I can remember one particular hole. I think it was 13 on the back nine, and I can see him emptying about half of his golf bag and golf balls trying to get over that little par three. There was a ravine over it. Can I keep going? <laughs> I have... I have never had a better friend than Mark, friends than Mark and Naomi and their family. I admire, I love, we love uh, the Wilhoits, and I thank them for the opportunity to come and minister for you today. And uh, you probably have already guessed uh, something about me before, before I'd spoken a minute uh, and, uh, and guessed that we're from down south of you a little bit. No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm left-handed. That's what it was that you were picking up on. I want to share this morning, if we could, from Luke chapter 11, the prayer conundrum, the prayer conundrum. Chad is surprised I would know a word like conundrum, but uh, I went to the University of Google and it seemed to fit real well. But I want to preach on the prayer conundrum this morning for a little while. Luke 11, and beginning with the first verse of that. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Correctly read, that's Luke 11, 1 through 4. Pray with me if you would, please. Our Father, truly who art in heaven, thank you for your visitation with man today all over our world. Groups of believers are gathered to honor you. Lord, we do so as worship and praise has filled this house, and now as your word goes forward, draw us ever nearer to you, and we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. I want to speak on a subject you may have guessed from the title, The Prayer Conundrum, 
I want to speak because I think it is, and, and you know this, it is vital to who we are. Prayer is absolutely vital. There are some things we do that are totally optional, subject to our own individual tastes and so forth, but prayer is absolutely essential. When I say essential, when I say vital, think of food. <clears throat> Somebody can say amen. amen. Water, air, Wi-Fi. <laughs> now I got you. Yeah. These things are absolutely essential for who we are. But now there, there are some things we've all heard, perhaps have said, that they pose and mimic prayer, but I don't know. Oh, God, where did I put those keys? We've probably heard that said or said something similar myself. Well, heaven help, what are you doing now? Well, you know, you had God in the first, you had heaven in the second. I don't know, though, if that's really what we're talking about, what, what Jesus meant when he, when he said we need to be people of prayer. When the disciples, the Lord teaches to pray, probably it went a little different direction than, than those exclamations. I'll talk to you about three things today, and the first of those is the importance of prayer. Most of you in this room have discovered that long ago, that it is important that we pray. How important is it? Well, in Numbers 11 and 2, the children of Israel had angered God. Imagine that. They had angered him to the point that he had sent fire out in the camp, and many of them were succumbing to it. And Moses, catching on to what was going on, the folk probably deserved it because they had been complaining. And I can see from your faces, that's not, that's not your problem. <laughs> but they were complaining, and so he's, he sends fire among them, and Moses, the meek and loving shepherd that he was, prays. Now, <laughs> how important is prayer? It shut off the fire. It shut off the fire. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas are in prison. The inner recesses of the prison, New Testament now. Same God. Prayer still works the same way. Amen. These two fellows have been put in chains. They have been beaten. They've been abused for the having the audacity to preach Christ and Him resurrected. And they're in the inner recess of the prison, and you can imagine the conditions, but at midnight, said they started singing and praising God and praying. When we pray, God moves. When we pray, God moves. And... and Sometimes he speaks to us. Sometimes it's through his actions. But God, all, I believe God answers every prayer. Every prayer. Sometimes not the way I'd like for it to be answered or at the timing I would like, but God answers them all. In the kings, the king, Hezekiah at the time, got word from the prophet to get his house in order. He was going to take the long journey. He was going to die. Hezekiah knew how to pray. And so he turns his face to the wall, and he prays a prayer that I don't think I would have had the courage to have prayed. Because if, if you had the time to look it up and read it and do so later at your leisure, it, it almost sounds like, hey, God, you know you and I are pretty tight. And he lets God know, I've, I'm all of that and a bag of chips. I've been on your side my entire life. I have followed you nobly. You see where I'm going with it? That, 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 was, a, that was a bold prayer to pray to God. And God listens in when he prays and said, 
Hezekiah, you're exactly right. That's the kind of response I want to get when I'm praying. To hear the Father say, yes, sir, John. <laughs> you're exactly right, son. He says, Hezekiah, here's what, we know you're allowing me a paraphrase. He says, you're not going to die. I'm extending your life 15 years. That man knew how to pray. Ooh. The prayer conundrum. It's, it's important that we know how to pray. But if there's th this, this one major point I want to leave with you today, if, if you forget most anything else I've said today, I want you to remember this about prayer. No matter how you may come before our Father, how stumbling, how halting, no matter what you may be dragging into your prayer time with Him, no, no matter how, how weakly or frailly you may approach the throne, no matter how many times you've come, perhaps with the same problem, you are always welcome in His presence. If you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to know that you're always, you have not sinned so badly that you're not welcome. You haven't come so many times that he's annoyed by you showing up continually. If there's anything that gives our Heavenly Father joy in his heart, it's for one of his kids, one of his children, to take the time. And it's especially touching on his heart when you're going through a miserable moment and you remember him. You'll find his heart. You'll find his heart. It's so important that we be people of prayer. I know I'm preaching to the choir. We are people of prayer. I have rejoiced from afar, from a distance with this congregation over some of the answers to prayer that I've heard about that Christy and Chad have reported back to us. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord, that you're in that heavenly realm and that you really do listen and respond when we pray. It's important that we pray. Nothing else is more important than touching base with our Creator. Because He's already been there. The way that I'm going, He's already been there. Many have gone before us, know the way, and He knows exactly what to say or what to do that will make Him very real in our situation. Oh, that we be people of prayer. I love to sing. I, I love all of the activities of church. Church has been our lives for nigh on to years. <laughs> and we love it. And we especially love it. Oh, love the, the time of prayer around the altars and the, the others that have been raised today that literally bring an audience between God, which brings me to point two. The participants in prayer. Prayer, the conundrum of prayer is, is that it, it is so vital, yet can seem so difficult. It's like we, we all believe prayer to be one of the, the noblest endeavors we can undertake. We know it's important. We, we believe that God Here's an answer's prayer. We, we, have, we have his written word where he has done so. We have testimonies in this crowd today where he continues to do so. We believe that. But yet we still, there's something about prayer that I don't know if, if we, I think perhaps, I'll speak for me, I'm probably the only one in the room that tends to sometime overthink it and, and, and that's really something for me to overthink something. Beth, you just sit there and be quiet. 
Prayer is simple communication with the Heavenly Father. Simply, and there are two aspects of it in the participation. There are two participants. There's me. There's you. And you, and you, and you, and you. And there's God. And here's how prayer works. I approach the throne boldly, not arrogantly, but boldly. He wants me to come that way. He invites me. I, I, he's never too busy for you or I. We're family, friend. No matter what else is going on in our world, family comes first. And when family wants the father's ear, family gets the father's ear. When my son or daughter wants to talk to me, it doesn't matter what's on television. It doesn't matter who's on the phone. It doesn't matter what's going on in, on Facebook and Instagram. My son or daughter needs my attention. That's where it's at. And the, the way this works is that, that I initiate a conversation or a plea. And sometimes as we're talking, remember, us and God, you and God, I and God, me and God. And I start out and sometimes I use words and sometimes words don't seem sufficient because oftentimes when I'm engaged in prayer, my heart is busted in a million pieces and I can't find most of them. And so I'm bawling. Up here it's crying. In the south it's, we bawl. <laughs> I am I'm anguished, but I'm communicating with my Heavenly Father. And sometimes the, the words that I want to say, and I, perhaps this is, this is what impedes a lot of us in prayer, is we're trying to find just the right words, just the right way to say it. I, when I was, when I, early on, when I was just a youngster, eh, years ago, and I was really learning how to pray, I thought you had to pray King James. Can you imagine a southern boy? Approaching the throne of God in Elizabethan English. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> that's what I heard from the throne. God's got a sense of humor. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? But the participants are us and God, and so I convey to God. It, it may be through tears. Sometimes it's through joy. But I convey to God, Lord, I love you. I need you. I need your help. And I pour myself out to God. Sometimes I go to the Word. When, when I don't have the words, I go to the Word and just read His Word to Him. Sometimes I even, when my own language, I'm, I'm glad I'm Pentecostal. Because part of that was, a, was the endowment of a language I never learned, but heaven gave me when I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, and, and sometimes I won't know what words that I want to use. I won't know how to go to God. And so the Spirit just takes over. And I don't know what it is about that. I can't explain it beyond the fact that it was a gift. But I know that when I shut the door on my prayer closet and I hit my knees and I dry my tears and I'm speaking in the Spirit, after about 15 minutes, I feel better. How many know what I'm talking about? I feel better. I have touched Father, and He's touched me. <laughs> I talk, God listens, and God responds. <laughs> now, when I say that God speaks, He was asked, Reverend Charles Crabtree one time, who, who, who for a while was our assistant general superintendent of our movement, and He made made it known that he had heard from God in prayer time. 
that God had spoken to him. Well, some, some uh, wiseacre replied and said, you mean you heard God audibly? To which he responded, oh, no, it was much louder than that. In prayer, it's not complete. Conversation hasn't happened when I just, God, it's John, blah, 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 blah. I need to do that. I think. I do it anyway. I go to God a lot with most everything. God, help me with this. Help me with that. But then God's end of this, he replies. He responds. Now, when you're in an elevator, let it slip out sometime. God said something to you. It's okay if you talk to God. It's quite acceptable. But if you're one of those, like we are, who've actually had God respond back, and sometimes it's not just words. You remember the situation on Mount Carmel where the prophet Elijah, I counted them. He prayed one of the simplest prayers, 67 words. You can count them. They're there. But he needed to hear from God. Now, there's times you need to hear from God. His life literally hung in the balance in that contest. He was there outnumbered 450 to 1 by the prophets of Baal. They had had a little contest go on, and now it was Elijah's time. He said the one whose God answers by fire, he's going to be the one that we serve. Well, hey. When you have a prayer and God sends fire, yes, sir, he's number one. He's number one. We know how it went. I'm going to cut right to the chase. He prayed a 67-word little simple prayer. God never said a word. Don't you hate that when God just doesn't say anything? We're not through with this, though. It's not always the words. God responds by his actions. We talked about Paul and Silas earlier in the, in the jail, in the prison. God didn't say much then, but he sent an earthquake and shook them loose and set them free. God responds when we pray. Sometimes it's more than with words. And so Elijah prayed and said, God, it, and, and I'm getting right to the chase. I'm paraphrasing this. He said, show them, God. Now, if you'll read what's there in whatever version you have, whatever translation you'll have, and you get it right down to the nuts and bolts, that's what he said. All right, God, show them yourself. Show them who you are. And he did. Elijah backed up just in time because fire from heaven fell, drank up all of these, these huge tubs of water, gallons and gallons of water, ate up the sacrifice on the altar, licked up the dust of the ground. There wasn't anything. My God answers prayer, and if he'll do it for Elijah, he'll do it for Joe and Bill and Susie and John and Jennifer. He still answers prayer. <sighs> he gives direction. Moses and the children of Israel are at the Red Sea. They're escaping all the years, 430 years of slavery. And they've been on the march out of slavery, and they come to the Red Sea, and it's, there's no way to get across it. There, there's all these hundreds of thousands of people, and no way to get across it. They don't have a raft. They don't have a boat. They don't have the time because behind them is Pharaoh marching just as quick as he can. He's had a change of heart. The devil had a change of heart. Imagine that. And he set it against them and he's going to kill them. And the ones he don't kill, he's going to take them back and imprison them again. They're done for. There's mountain ranges on both sides. One of the only times in Scripture that you find a situation where God says don't pray was right here. Moses starts to pray because the people are just about to do him in. His, his own people. Moses, you brought us out here. What are we going to do? God's going to give us a way. When you pray, God gives direction. God says, Moses, take that staff in your hand and point it right over here, right out over that body of water, 
over that challenge, over that obstacle, over that Goliath, over that enemy that's in your way. God is here and he's about to answer prayer. It separates for him. When you pray, God gives you direction. How many know, how many know when he did that, they knew which way to go? <laughs> yeah. Ah. I love the interaction when God, when God responds. When we know how to pray, if we'll fear God in a wholesome, reverential way, in our prayer time, we don't have to be afraid of anybody or anything else. Because God and just one of us is a majority. Whew. How many of you know and could testify if you had a chance today about answered prayer in your own life? Wave at me. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Lastly, I want to talk to you about the significance of prayer. The importance, the participants, and the significance. Prayer is significant because it brings God and you and I together. I don't know how people do it that leave God out. I, I, I really don't. He's my best friend. I've told my wife any number of times, she was the second most important person in my world. And when I explained that, and I know some of you lay, well, wait a minute now. Isn't she number one? No. God's number one. And she's fine with that. That's what makes it work. He's my friend. He's my counselor. He's my confidant. I can tell God anything. I can get mushy before him. I can weep. I can just be in an absolute wreck of a heap before him, and it's okay. I, he, he tells me, John, you don't have to impress me. I know you. Let's just reason together. Oh, to reason with the Heavenly Father. And it doesn't matter how often you've come. It doesn't matter what the reasoning was, how, how awful the situation or circumstance that led to your coming to Him. You know, some of us are just, I think we get, we get ashamed. We get embarrassed. And so, Lord, you, you, you can't be happy that, I, that I've, I, I'm coming again with this same thing. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. And there are a number of you out there, when your children want to talk to you, dad or mom, grandpa, grandma, it doesn't matter that they were there yesterday. You're glad they're back. You're glad that they love you enough, trust you enough have learned to gain from your insights and your love and your, your, your understanding and your comfort that they just, you know, we, we need to be people that are so comfortable in Father's lap. Just cut all the religion out. It's not about bow your head, fold your hands, close your eyes. You don't want to do that in Louisville. On the interstate? No, sir. No, sir. Prayer is from here to God's ear. From my heart to God's ear. And if you have allowed the enemy to tell you you're not welcome in his presence. Satan is a liar. The father of lies. He made you family. He adopted you through the blood. 
and he wants you more than we could ever know. He wants you to come and say, Father, Abba, Dad, Creator, Lord, oh my God, it's John again. It's John again. Lord, that's something I, don't, I, I can't figure out. I don't know how to do this. I don't know what direction to go. I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to counsel these folks. I don't know how to pray here. I don't have all the information. Lord, what am I to do? And there's, there's a still, small voice. that's inside of each of us as believers. And that still, small voice will have exactly the prescription for our situation, for our moment. And he's looking today, surveying, as only the Spirit of God can. I wouldn't have a notion what your need might be any more than you'd know mine. But the Spirit of our God has been here for the last hour because you invited him, you welcomed him. You reached out and said, we want you to direct this service. There may be some here today that would just in the recesses of their own spirit. I, say, I, I, I don't know. I just, I feel uncomfortable with Father. I'm afraid I'll say the wrong thing, use the wrong words. Don't be. You're never going to get it wrong. If you come humbly and in faith, that's all he asks. You, you, don't, you don't have to have profound words. Just come. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you if you would just right at your seats to just bow your head for a moment. Perhaps shut your eyes right there at your, at your seat for just a couple of moments. And I want us to get relatively quiet because I want, I want you to hear Father's voice because you need to hear that you need to be reminded some, some need to be reminded how precious you are to him today that he's not mad at you he's not holding something against you you're not on probation of some sort he's just glad you're here And if you're struggling with something and the Spirit has convicted your heart, that's because He loves you. But He's not mad at you. He just wants you to see it. Confess it. You don't have to tell me. I can't do a thing about it. But if you'll tell Father, just right where you sit, Lord, I open my spirit. prayer is communion prayer is conversation prayer is from the relationship and it doesn't matter how hard you can tell God anything he never repeats it you'll never hear it again except if he's speaking with you about it mighty God we serve wonderful head of our family who has done so much to earn our trust as he laid down his life for us hung on that cruel tree and rose again If you're here today 
and you just really do need a word from God. You just need to hear something from heaven. Right there at your seat. Would you just stand right there at your seat? Just join me. Just stand right there. It could it could be for physical healing, family, finances, direction. You, you may need to repent of something and it's difficult. Trust Father. Trust Father. We're going to wait another moment or two. Just trust Father. If you, let, if you feel led of the Spirit to say something to Him, by all means, you go right ahead. He's listening. But I want us also to take some of our time of prayer, some of our time when we're communing with Father, and just listen. Just be still and quiet. Father, your children need you. They're desiring a word, a touch. God, just be God. Just be God. Just, just do it again, Lord. They've heard testimonies. Now do it for them. They've read in Scripture what you've done, what you're famous for. Now do, do for them as they love on you. Precious God. What a wondrous Father you are. Lord Jesus, what an awesome Savior you are. As I close my comments today, when God has responded, then I want you to share as, as best you can with someone how good God is. Thank you, Pastor John, for this word today that you've shared with our church. <clears throat> you know, prayer, prayer is our vital breath. Prayer is to the spiritual man what our air is to the natural man. We have to have air, don't we? We have to have air. We have to have oxygen to breathe. And that's what prayer is to the spiritual man. It's the very breath of God, the very breath of the Spirit. God makes available to us. Prayer is the Christian's vital breath. And so, take what he said today, take it home with you, and recognize that God is a prayer answering God. And there's no limit to what God can do as we, the people of God, pray and as we believe Him and as we reach out to Him. There's no limit to what He can do. Let's stand together today. The altars are open even after we have prayed this prayer together. If you need to come to the altar for any reason, please feel free to do that. The altars are open if you need to come. Father, I thank you today for your blessings. Thank you for this service, Lord, and for the opportunity of being able to be here to worship you and to hear your word. And so, God, I pray today that we would leave this place understanding how important it is that we be people of prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He meant for them to pray. It's not an option. It's not something that we can take or leave. It's something, Lord, that we're meant to do as the people of God because you want us to have communion with you, Lord. And so we commit our lives to a greater life of prayer and a greater life of communion with God. I pray this today, Jesus. Lord, bless us as we leave. Keep your hand upon us, O oh God. All through this week and all that we're involved in, we commit our lives to you. Help us to represent you well. We give you praise in your name today. Amen.
Amen. God bless you again. The altars are open. If you need prayer, please come. God bless you. Have a great week.